In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. The Gospel is from the Sermon of, on the Mount. Jesus talks about the false prophets and tells us by what signs we will recognize them, their works. What does the Church want to tell us? She teaches us to distinguish the true Christian life from the false ones. We know a tree, a tree by its fruit. In the same way, we know, we know a true Christian not by his pious words, but by the way he does good work, good swim. Imagine walking into a beautiful, well-kept garden with many fruit trees. There are trees with lot of fruit and trees with only leaves. A stream flow through the garden, bringing refreshment to the trees. The sun shines with gentle radiance. The farmer and his helpers work to make the trees grow. But if the tree does not bear fruit, despite the efforts of the gardener, then in the end, the master of the house cuts down the tree and puts it into the fire. The parable is very easy to understand. We are in the garden of the church. Every Christian is a tree in this garden. The gardener is Christ who plants and feeds the trees. The stream sprang from the wound in Christ's side and flows through the garden of the church in the sacraments. The sun is the Holy Ghost who makes fruit ripen. And now the father of the family walks with the farmer in the trees. It's God the Father and Christ visit our soul. They examine it, not for the beautiful crown of leaves, but for the fruit, meaning the good works. They stop before a tree. This tree, it's me, it's you. The Gospel proposes a serious examination of conscience. Are we a good tree with good, with good fruit? We will be recognized by our fruits, by our works. The most important thing is not the words. Thorns don't produce grapes, and bad trees don't produce good fruits. The Lord teaches us that the reality of good works does not consist in such appearances, and that we must therefore recognize each one by its fruits. For it, for it is not only diligence in words that will obtain the kingdom of heaven, and it is not the one who says, Lord, Lord, who will inherit it. For what merit is, in, is there in saying, Lord, Lord, for the Lord? Good and holy words cost little, and the devil himself knows how to quote holy scripture to deceive us. What is important is to overcome oneself in order to accomplish the holy will of God. Our life on earth is not a joyful walk, but an arduous march and a fight against the devil. We will have all eternity to spend in heaven with God and all the saints. On earth, we must earn heaven by working on ourselves to conform to God's will. If we live in the goods of this world, looking for our personal comfort, no longer looking for God, then we are a dead tree, without fruit. And as you have seen in the, in the Gospel, the farmer cuts down, cuts, cuts down the dead tree and puts it into the fire. Eternity, therefore, requires our effort. We must expend a little effort. We must hold fast to the good, avoid, avoid all evil, obey the divine precepts with all our hearts, and by completing such duties, we will be known by God. If until now we have not produced fruit or little fruit, let us try to make everything we do or say fruit for heaven by a great purity of intention. And in this way, we will have the joy of hearing 
from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself, these words come. Blessed of my Father, take possession of the kingdom of heaven, because all that you have done, you have done only to please me. This is what I wish for you. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.